Close your eyes Give me your hand Darling Do you feel my heart beating? Do you understand? So Miss Prisky Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. And I have to say, having met you about five minutes ago, you are really frisky. Well, you know, it's the morning. I'm treating myself. It's spring. I'm just getting into the spirit. So tell me about the show then. What, what can we expect? What's going to be fun? What's going to be fabulous? Well, the show basically comes from a conversation I had while I was here in Auckland in March um, with my dear friend Miss Behave from La Soiree, who said, I just wish I could just tell you what to sing and then sit back and just watch you sing it because I just want to hear you sing X, Y, Z. And I was sort of like, well, I mean, that could be fun. Um, and so we started playing around with that idea that I could just kind of be a bit of a human jukebox because I, when, you, when you've been a singer for a very long time, you know approximately 14 million songs. And it almost seems a shame not to just sort of go, sure, I'll sing whatever, let's see what happens. And then it, while we were doing it, while we were playing around with it, it became more almost about why people want to hear certain songs, what their favorite songs are, what their story is with that song, because everyone's kind of got some songs that have a little bit of backstory in their life. Um, and that became deeply enjoyable for me to not only get to sing something that I know somebody wants to hear, which is always a bonus, um, but also to find out why, which was rather fun. Well, what I find exciting about this is because when I saw you last year, yes. I was blown away by your voice. Oh, stop. Because, because you have an absolutely stunning and powerful voice. That's very kind. And I think you could do opera, and I would love to see you do more. So explain yeah. this voice to me. A, <laughs> Where did it come from? Have you been classically trained? Or, because it, it, it was a remarkable voice. That's very kind. I, um, I, I was raised in music. So my father was, um, originally he did the sort of nightclub scene in the 70s. I have some amazing pictures of him in platforms and flares with his guitar. Um, and then he went into musical theatre. So when I was growing up, I was around musical theatre constantly. So I think when you grow up in musical theatre, you actually grow up without a fixed style all the time. Um, so I was singing all sorts of things as I was growing up. And then I went to the Royal Academy of Music in London. They have a fabulous musical theatre program. And within that, one of the first things they say to you is, any sound you can hear, you're physiologically capable of making somehow. Things will be easier and harder for different people, and there'll be things that you're more drawn to, um, and there'll be things you could try your entire life and never quite get there. But in theory, if a human being can make that noise, you're also capable of making that noise. And I think that just opened a door in my head and I was like, oh, anything is possible. And I've just been having fun with that for the last 10 years. So you obviously though love combining your talent with comedy. Yes. That's obvious. So, so, so why is that? What is it you like to... Um, I think I am fundamentally um, an idiot, I think, is basically all that is. When I was training, we had these lessons called musicality. We had this wonderful teacher who would just start, we'd come in the room, he'd just start playing something and he'd be like, go, make up a song, just sing something, whatever comes into your heart, whatever you want to do. And, and sometimes we'd come in, he'd just play a song and then go, what do you think about that? What does that make you feel? What do you, what do you think about? And he came, I, we came in and he was playing um, I've Never Been To Me. You know, I've been to Nice and the Isle of Greece and I've sipped champagne on a yacht. And it's all this, I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. And he just played it with no comment and then said, what do you think? And I howled laughing. I'd never heard the song before. I was just like, that is hilarious. That is the funniest song I've ever heard. What an awful woman. That sounds awful. And he just went, I think that's one of the most beautiful and truthful songs I've ever heard. And I was just like, oh, yeah, no, it's very nice, very nice indeed. <laughs> so at that point, I realized my relationship to music was possibly going to be slightly different from other people's. And again, that's just something I've had fun with for the last 10 years. <laughs> it's interesting you bring up that song because I downloaded it on iTunes recently because I remember it from being a teenager. So I was around when it first came out. It's a fabulously tasteless song. So tasteless. But it's brilliant. But it's beautiful and her voice is beautiful. But and oh, she does the speaking monologue. Why do people do speaky bits in songs? Can someone have a word with Taylor Swift and say, please, stop well, it? 
Do you um, do you like to be political? Or is it just about having a good time? Well, it's a funny one because the show that uh, we were doing last year with Frisky and Manish, Cab Riot, was political. Out and out political. We were saying, in a funny way, all of this stuff is horribly absurd and painfully absurd and, and painful. Um, and that was very new for us. We'd, we'd spent years before that just doing pop parodies and, and covers and, and like trying to make people laugh, just trying to make people laugh. And then we finally went, the world is a very different place from when we started doing this stuff. And, and we were angry and we felt like we couldn't just do another silly, funny show while we had this anger about what was happening around us. So we, we, we kind of had to do it. Um, and now the world has changed again. And it's that thing, it's, it's, almost beyond satire what is happening now. I think there's, only, there's kind of two ways you can, you can take presenting some kind of show, I think, at this point in our lives, which is you either have to rail and, and express all of that anger, or you just have to go, none of us know how to deal with this. Let's just sing, dance and party and kind of try and forget what is happening right now and let's just put that all to one side and just celebrate the now and celebrate what we have because who knows when the Koreans might do something mental. So let's just have a bit of a party.